Every UFC weight class has that one fighter that can just put anyone's lights out at any minute, no matter the skill. And today we're going to be going over the hardest hitters in every UFC weight class. So, I was originally going to do this with just, you know the UFC as a whole rather than each weight class but then I realized it would just be full of light heavyweights and heavyweights so I'm going to make it fair I'm going to include every weight class in this and we're going in there with heavyweight now for heavyweight I could have chosen so many fighters for this because heavyweight is known for the, the power punches so it was very hard to choose heavyweight but I'm going to finalize I'm going to choose Derek Lewis now before everyone starts commenting what about Sergey Pavlovich I think Derek Lewis has more pure power. The reason Sergei Pavlovich is able to get these KOs and TKOs isn't just because of his power. It's also because of his accuracy and his volume and his precision and the fact that he's got such long reach. I believe he's got the second longest reach in the UFC besides Jones. But I think when it comes to pure power, if you were to give these two a punch machine, I think Derek Lewis would get the more power. I mean, look at them against Curtis Blades, for example. That's a good example. Sergey Pavlovich finishes Curtis Blades by multiple powerful shots. It's not like a one shot done. It's multiple powerful shots coming in until Curtis Blades just can't take it. Whereas when Derek Lewis KO'd Curtis Blades, it was just one shot done. Um, he is carried by power. If Derek Lewis didn't have power, I genuinely don't think he'd be in the UFC. He's got 14 knockouts in the UFC, which is insane. And just to, to compare it, his grappling's terrible, his cardio's terrible, even his technique is terrible. But he's got power and power only, and that's the reason why he's still in the UFC. He like even the Alexander Volkov fight a couple of years ago, where Alexander Volkov won the entire fight, and then right at the last minute, Derek Lewis just smacks him and knocks him out. <clears throat> the power that Derek Lewis has is insane, and in my opinion, he is the hardest hitting heavyweight in the world. There are a couple other people at heavyweight. I guess you could have gone with maybe someone like Tom Aspinall, but he just hasn't fought enough to show it yet. I'm going to go Derek Lewis. I think he's the hardest hitting heavyweight now that Francis Ngannou has gone. Like I said, I think Sergey Pavlovich has multiple tools which he's able to get in the knockouts. Whereas I feel like Derek Lewis only has power, but he's got a lot of it, which is why he's able... I mean, look at the, the, the fight at UFC 291 against Marcos. One knee to the jaw is all it took to finish Marcos. I know he had to follow up with ground and pound, but... What I'm saying is Derek Lewis hits like a tank. I think he's the hardest hitting person in the UFC right now, but... Yeah, for heavyweight, I'm going to go with Derek Lewis. Moving now to light heavyweight, I'm going to go with Alex Pereira. Um, definitely the hardest hitter, in my opinion, at light heavyweight. He rocked Jan Blachowicz multiple times. Ankalaya doesn't hit harder. Johnny Walker, Nikita Krylov doesn't hit harder. Um, Jamal Hill is up there, but I don't think he hits harder. Yuri Prohaska is up there, but I don't think he hits harder. I think Alex Pereira is the hardest hitter in light heavyweight. He's got a left hand made of stone. You get hit with that left hand and you're going to sleep or at least getting rocked. Knockouts over Sean Strickland. That knockout he got over Sean Strickland was insane as well. The only guy to finish Adesanya in the UFC. Only guy to knock him out as well. Um, he had the fly knee knockouts earlier on in his career. He knows how to put someone's lights out. Out of 10 MMA fights, he's won 6 of them by KO, which is a very good record. He's got a 60% KO rate. And he's got scary punch and kick power. It's not just like he's got hard hands. He can kick like a... He's got powerful kicks as well. And he had scary power in kickboxing. If you look at his kickboxing highlights, he was a double... I think he was a double glory kickboxing world champion. This guy has some scary freakish power about him, man. Scary power. You know, he was putting people to sleep left, right and center. He even made Adesanya need an oxygen tank in kickboxing. There's that video where he slept Adesanya so bad he needed an oxygen tank. He's a very hard hitter. I think he's going to put someone's lights out at light heavyweight. And I don't just mean rock him like he did with Adesanya. I think he's going to put them to sleep. Um, I th I'm pretty sure he's going to be fighting Yuri Prohaska next. And I'm probably going to go with Alex Pereira. He's so good. He he's so powerful. Hard hitting. He's terrifying. He was even more terrifying at middleweight because he was so huge. But even at light heavyweight, he's bringing the power to light heavyweight. And the, the, the scary thing about Adesanya, I mean not Adesanya, Alex Pereira... Is we just said about you know Sergey Pavlovich having the skills and Derek Lewis having the power. I think um, Alex Pereira has both. I think he's the most skilled striker and the hardest hitting striker. And when you put those two together, you've got a scary fighter. So for light heavyweight, I'm going to go with Alex Pereira for the hardest hitter. Middleweight was very hard to choose. Now that Alex Pereira is gone, I, I looked at the division. There was a couple people that I thought, but I'm going to finalize. I'm going to go with Paulo Costa. I think he is the hardest hit in middleweight. This was very hard to choose. I don't think it's Adesanya. Um, 
Adesanya is definitely the most skilled striker right now in middleweight, but I don't think he's the hardest hitting. Jarrah Cannonier could be up there, but his last finish was Derek Brunson, and that was a very sloppy finish as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Paolo Costa. Let's be honest, he's on the secret juice. Undisclosed juice, he's on the secret juice. He started his UFC career on a KO streak as well. I think he was like a, a four-fight win streak of first round and second round KOs. Um, and that just displayed this freakish power that he had. And even then, the fights with Yo Romero, showing that he's, power, he's got power as well. He's got some nasty head kicks as well. The head kicks he did to Adesanya and Vittori... That should have slept Vittori, but I wouldn't say that's because of Paolo Costa's power. I'm, I'm going to say that's because of Marvin Vittori's chin. But, um, yeah, Paolo Costa has some scary, freakish power about him, man. He should have finished Luke Rockhold. I'm going to be honest, he probably should have finished Luke Rockhold because Luke Rockhold is known for having a dodgy chin. Uh, Paolo Costa did make him bloody and everything, but he probably should have finished him. He's going to be fighting Hamza at UFC 294. Um... But I think he's the hardest hit in middleweight right now. He's huge for a middleweight as well. He should be light heavyweight. What did he miss when he fought Marvin Vittori? Wasn't it an eight pound weight disadvantage to Vittori? For middleweight, I'm gonna go yeah, I'm gonna go Paolo Costa. Not the most skilled striker. I'm not gonna say he's the most skilled and his fight IQ isn't the smartest, but when it comes to pure power, I think it's gotta go to Paolo Costa, man. He's huge for middleweight. He shouldn't be in the middleweight division, he should be a light heavyweight, kind of like Pereira. But once again, I'm going to go with Paolo Costa for middleweight. Welterweight. Welterweight, I'm going to go with Kamaru Usman. Um, it's definitely not Leon Edwards because, yes, Leon Edwards did put Usman to sleep, but Leon Edwards hasn't really got that much finishes in the UFC. Like, he couldn't finish Nate Diaz before that. Like, he, he's known for point fighting, is Leon Edwards. I'm not saying he's a bad fighter. I'm not saying he can't put your lights out. But I'm saying he's known for being more of a point fighter rather than a one shot done. And I know Kamar Usman slowed down in his past couple of fights, but look at look at Kamar Usman back in 2021. Broke Covington's jaw, put Masvidal to sleep, finished Gilbert Burns easily. Those were some dominant performances by Kamar Usman. CEO of EPO as well, so he's got that extra power. He's got a scary, powerful jab, one of the best jabs in UFC history. I think he's the only guy to sleep Masvidal as well. I don't think anyone else has put Masvidal to sleep like that. So, Kamaru Usman, in my opinion, is the hardest hitting welterweight. Corby Covington has pillow hands. Shavkat Rachmanov, he's more popular because of his grappling. He's got decent striking, but more popular because of his grappling. Um, Gilbert Burns, he hits hard, but nowhere near as hard as Kamaru Usman. Balama Mohamed, do I even need to talk? For welterweight, yeah, I'm going to go with Kamaru Usman. I think he hits the hardest. I think he could still potentially put someone to sleep, man. He has definitely slowed down these past couple of years, especially after the Leon Edwards head kick. But before that head kick, man, this guy had some scary power. Just making people bleed, wrecking people's faces. He was a scary fighter. I would not want to be going against Kamaru Usman. Even the Tyrone Woodley fight, where he just battered Tyrone Woodley. And Tyrone Woodley was meant to be the powerhouse at this time. And Usman just blew it out the window. So for well to it, I'm going to go with... Kamaru is meant for being the hardest hitting welterweight. I think I think that's pretty agreeable as well. There's a couple people that hit hard at welterweight, but I'm gonna go the the CEO of EPO, Kamaru Usman, for the hardest hitting welterweight. Lightweight. Lightweight again is one of those divisions where there's so many options to choose from. But I'm gonna go with uh, Michael Chandler. I'm gonna br bring it back to the the punch machine. Um, with him and Justin Gaethje. I think if you put them on a punch machine to get a score, I think Chandler's is higher. I think the reason Gaethje gets so many more finishes and knockouts than Chandler, I mean, we just saw him put, put uh, Dustin Porio out at UFC 291, is because Gaethje's a better striker. He's better timing. Everything on the technical side goes to Gaethje, you know, the fight IQ. Chandler's got power. His fight IQ isn't there, though, but he's definitely got insane power. And in my opinion, he's the hardest hitting lightweight. He dropped Oliveira and nearly finished Oliveira. He put Ferguson to sleep for the first time. He knocked out Dan Hooker brutally. He nearly finished Poirier in that first round at UFC 281. He's one of the most explosive fighters in the UFC as well. Um, if this guy has a couple more fights, without a doubt, I can genuinely see him putting someone to sleep. Like I said, he doesn't really make the smartest decisions. His fight IQ isn't there. Um... He, yeah, his fight IQ isn't there, his technique could be improved, but he's explosive and he hits like a truck. Justin Gaethje would definitely be number two, but I'm going to put Michael Chandler above him. I think Gaethje hits hard, but Gaethje masters the timing and precision that, that Chandler maybe doesn't. But I'm going to go with, with pure power. 
Michael Chandler, man, look at him. He's built like a tank. He hits like a tank. Michael Chandler is extremely powerful for a lightweight. Him versus McGregor. I know McGregor's quite hard hitting as well, but when was the last time McGregor finished someone? Was it Cerrone back in 2020? Early 2020 was his last finish. And before that, it was like Eddie Alvarez. It's got to be Chandler, man. It's got to be Chandler. Even in Bellator, you look at his last two Bellator fights, he was putting those two people to sleep in the first round. He got two first round finishes in Bellator in his last two fights. Chandler hits like a truck. No no doubt about it. He's gonna, like, Chandler's one of those fighters that could be losing the entire fight, and then all it takes is one shot to put them out, pretty much like everyone else on this list. But I'm going to go Chandler for this uh, lightweight division. But number two would definitely be Gaethje, but I'm going to say Chandler. Oliveira's up there too, but I need to see a little bit more from Oliveira. Again, I think Oliveira's just got way more skill than Chandler, but pure power-wise, I'm going to give it to Chandler. Featherweight, I'm going to go Ilya Taporia. I was very close for going with Josh Emmett, but you look at Josh Emmett's record and he really hasn't got that much knockouts. Like, if you're going to be call yourself a hard hitter, you have to have at least some knockouts on your resume, and Josh Emmett doesn't really have that, like... He's just an overhand warrior. I think Ilya Taporia is one of the hardest hitting featherweights. People are going to be saying Volkanovski. Volkanovski is not really known for his power. Like, when was the last time Volkanovski put someone to sleep out cold? Don't get me wrong, Volkanovski, pound for pound, best. The most skilled fighter in the UFC right now. He's he's such a good striker. But when it comes to power, I'm going to give it to Ilya Taporia. He nearly knocked out Emma. In that fourth round against Josh Emma, I was watching that live. I was like, how is Emmett still alive? The ref is being so generous. Emmett was so close to being finished in that fourth round. Three out of his six UFC wins are by knockout. Look at look at Josh Emmett's face after that fight as well. But yeah, he's got some scary power. And I think Ilya Taporia could be a dark horse against Alexander Volkanovsky. People said that Yair Rodriguez would be this, you know, dark horse who's going to finish Volkanovsky. You know, they brought it back to Leon Edwards and Kamara and how, you know... Alexander Volkanovsky was on this streak and then Yaya Rodriguez comes in and ruins it just like Leon Edwards did but I think if anyone's going to do that it's going to be Ilya Taporia. Volkanovsky's got his eyes on Islam Makachev he wants to clear out the featherweight division just brush off Ilya Taporia but I feel like Ilya Taporia is going to ruin everyone's plans. I think he's, he could get a surprise knockout on Volkanovsky um, and Volkanovsky's going to have to immediately fight him and all the plans that him and Islam, Volkanovsky and Islam have made are going to go down the drain because I think he could be a genuine dark horse. Like, I see this guy much more of a threat than I did with Yaya Rodriguez, so I'm going to go Ilya Taporia. He hits very hard. That brutal knockout he did against Jai Herbert, the fight with Bryce Mitchell where he just ragdolled him, um, and then obviously the, the beating he put on Josh Emmett. When we see him face Volkanovsky... I'm so excited because that's going to be that's going to be a great. Volkanovski definitely goes to the skill, but when it comes to power, I'm going to give it Ilya Taporia. I'm going to give it Ilya Taporia. Josh Emmett would be there if he had a little bit more finishes, but yeah, Taporia hits like a truck. Paddy Pimlet is lucky they never fought, but featherweight I'm going Taporia. Bantamweight was probably the toughest division to choose because there's not really any people that stand out for just sleeping people. I was originally going to go PTM, but I'm actually going to go Sean O'Malley. People might disagree with this because, you know, he's skinny, he's crazy, but I'm going to go O'Malley. His record backs him. He's either KOing people or going through wars. The fight with Peter Yan, Peter Yan hasn't got that much finishes in the UFC. If you really look at it, he's not got that much finishes. When was his last finish? Was it Uriah Faber? Like, he hasn't got that much finishes. I think he finished Aldo as well, but... Um, I'm going to give, for Bantamweight, I'm going to give it to Sean O'Malley. He's been for absolute wars with people like Peter Yan. Um, he, I think he's got, yeah, six out of his nine wins are by knockout, which is insane. He's got a high percentage of knockout record. Underrated as well. Hard hitting for a skinny guy. You look at Sean O'Malley and you're like, this guy can't really hit that hard. And then he hits you and you get put to sleep. He's got some of the best walk-off KOs, some of the most brutal KOs in Bantamweight history as well. As well. Um... He's going to be fighting Aljamain Sterling at UFC 292, and I think that I think Sterling's going to win. I'm not going to make a prediction video yet, but I think Sterling's going to win. But O'Malley could be the guy to sleep Sterling on the feet. I know that Marlon Moraes did it as well, but I think the hardest hit in Bantamweight goes to Sean O'Malley. He's got some insane jabs, the hooks that he has. I think he would have probably finished Chris. What was it? Who did, who did he fight? I forgot who he fought. Um... Was it Pedro Munoz, the one where it was a no contest? I think it was. I think he would have finished him. O'Malley has some scary striking. 
he could sleep Sterling as well. I genuinely think he could sleep Sterling. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Sterling's going to finish him within two. But if we're talking about hard hitting and one of the best strikers, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with O'Malley. Sandhagen. I know he's got scary power, but in his past couple of fights, the one he had last night against Rob Font and the one the, not long ago against um, who was it, Marlon Vera. He was mainly just wrestling heavy. Marlon Vera, I mean, he KO'd Dominic Cruz, and who else was it? I forgot who else he KO'd. I think, what was it, Frankie Edgar? I just need to see more from Marlon. I can't can't speak. He needs to see more. I need to see more from um, Marlon Vera, but I'm going to say Bantamweight goes to Sean O'Malley. Flyweight, Flyweight's obviously the smallest division, but they've got some powerhouses in there. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Alexandre Pantoja. I think he's the hardest hitting Flyweight right now. That was what won him the Moreno fight. Obviously, it was his grappling as well. But I think the reason Pantoja was so effective on the feet was because of his power. Moreno's a way better striker. Well, maybe not way better, but Moreno's a better striker than Pantoja. I'm willing to admit, Moreno can strike better than Pantoja. But when it comes to effectiveness, Pantoja was effective because of his power. When Moreno hit Pantoja, it was just a hit. When Pantoja hit Moreno, it was rocking him. It was making him bloody. I think Pantoja's got some really powerful hits, man. He's got, he's got some really effective power. It's not just... He doesn't just swing and hope for the best. He uses his power very good. He's very effective with it. And he contributed to his win against Moreno. And whether he's winning or losing, he's always putting people through wars. Even the fight with Davis and Figueredo that he lost, he made it an absolute war. He made it a blood fest because of his power. Obviously, he's more of a grappling-heavy fighter, but he's a hard hitter on the feet, man. He's a very... Um, What's it called? Fast starter as well. You look at his fights, he tends to start the fight really fast. He tends to start his swinging and stuff, but he's got genuine knockout power. I think if he fight, I think he's, he might be fighting Amir Albazi next. Maybe it'll be a, a quadrilogy with Moreno, but whoever it is, I think he's got some scary power as well. Like, he might not be the most technical striker, but he probably is a scary guy to strike within the flyweight division, man. He can put your lights out at any moment, but for flyweight, I'm going to go Pantoja, but yeah. This is my list with the hardest hitting UFC fighters um, in every weight class. If you agree, please let me know. If you disagree, let me know. And thank you for watching.